Hey everybody, Kelly Boston with Tulsa World Outdoors here. I'm going to talk about a little trout fishing 101 here today. For folks that aren't fly fishing, uh, maybe you're getting a kid out to the one of the stock trout ponds here in Oklahoma this winter. Got my trout box out here and I want to just run through things with you real quick and show you a couple ways to rig things up. Of course, I also have with me today some artificial baits. Man, there are a ton of different kind of baits out there. A guy can play with for trout now, uh, things like these little gulp floating worms. Uh, there's all kinds of little bitty creature uh, baits a person can use, uh, the little trout nibbles and things like that, dough baits that float, a real handy way to uh, rig with these I'll show you later. Um, the, the gulp, uh, Berkeley gulp eggs, uh, they're float and you know I'll just show you real quick. These are a little bit of a cleaner option <laughs> than your natural uh, salmon eggs. Uh, these are tend to be a little stinkier and messier, and these are uh, just a little more rubbery and a little more durable. Um, but it's, you know, it's all a matter of preference. But just a lot of options out there for you. First thing to touch on are just the basic hooks in this box. I got six different sizes of hooks in two little compartments back here. Uh, three different sizes of bait keeper hooks. Uh, going down to 8, 10, and 12 size. It just depends on what size of a little piece of worm I might be using or, or, uh, or salmon eggs or whatever I might be throwing out there. And then two sizes of egg hooks, uh, a number eight, a number 10, and a number 8. I also found something uh, with these floating worms. I'll show you that's tricky with these egg hooks later. Uh, and then a number 12, a little number 12 treble hook works wonderful uh, for a, a bottom-up presentation with a floating uh, dove. I'll show you that later. Let's talk about spoons real quick. Uh, I got several different kinds of spoons, a super duper, which is kind of a U-shaped uh, spoon, which is probably one of my favorites uh, and a real popular one around here in Oklahoma. It just seems to catch trout. Uh, triple teasers are another uh, favorite of mine. They're just a real simple flat spoon. Um, I also have, you know, I have jigging spoons. I have casting spoons like the crocodiles and the pixies, the blue fox pixies, uh, and, you know, along the lines of the triple teaser, uh, just a regular old daredevil. A little standard daredevil is a good, good little spoon. One real quick note on using different kinds of spoons. You'll see things like the triple teaser, they come with a split ring in the front. The super duper comes in with a clip. Tie into that clip, tie into that ring. Those allow that spoon to wobble and work the way it's supposed to. New fishermen, especially beginners, tend to fall in love with a snap swivel and clipping into everything. And you don't need that snap swivel to prevent line twist uh, with spoons like this. Now, with the crocodile uh, and a pixie, uh, these heavier casting spoons like this, the crocodile comes with a barrel swivel on it and you want to tie into that because it's designed to wobble and roll. Uh, the same with the pixie. Uh, they usually come plain. Um, but these I will, I'll clip into these with a snap swivel because they're, they're designed to roll, especially in the current um, on the way in. While I'm on the subject of snap swivels, I'll go right into spinners. I got three different kinds in my box usually. The Blue, Blue Fox Vibrax is one of my favorites. Comes in different colors. It's a trout killer. Same for uh, the Meps Aglia Minnows with the... Uh, uh, either with a dressed or naked hook on them, and the same for the Panther Martins. One quick note on these when it comes to those, again, uh, the snap swivels. Uh, spinners, you know, you want to have something in your line to prevent that line twist, but as you can see here with this little zero size uh, Panther Martin here with the dressed hook, the snap swivel, and that's a, that's a smaller snap swivel. It's almost as big as the, as the lure itself, and to me that just defeats the presentation of that, that lure. Instead, I like to take, put a short leader on and tie a barrel swivel into your line. Um, that'll help prevent some of that line twist. You got a short leader on there. Sometimes I'll tie in a little 4X or something like that, a little lighter line. This is presenting the lure the way the lure is meant to be presented. Crank baits in my box, I've got Lazy Ikes, Rapalas, and Rebel uh, Cross, Wee Cross and Mini Cross, uh, different colors um, and different uh, types. Uh, here's your you know standard original floating Rapala, and then my trout killing favorite, the Countdown Minnow. I love these little countdowns because they sink. You can throw them just like a spinner. You count down one, two, three, start reeling in. And, and choose your depth for reeling it in. You know, if it's too shallow after a count of three, next time count to five, count to six. Uh, and when you start hitting trout, 
uh, then stick with that same count. Next comes the jigs, and boy, you can do a lot with those too. I mostly have the little rubber skirted jigs in my uh, box, eighth and sixteenth ounce jigs. Uh, but boy, you can use you know bucktails or marabou uh, jigs work just fine. Uh, I have plain jig heads in there. Sometimes you can tip them with little swim baits. Uh, you can cast that jig and reel it in. Uh, work it like a swim a swim jig or suspend it under a, a slip bobber. Um, I really love to put these, I love to tip that little 16th ounce jig with a salmon egg and put it under one of these little inline strike indicators. Um, a ton of different things you can do with a jig. Now we get to the fun stuff with our top down and bottom up presentations with sinkers and floats, different floats. And when I say bottom up, uh, you know you can put any kind of heavy sinker on a, on a line uh, above a barrel swivel or on a on a three-way uh, swivel or anything like that. I prefer these eggs, the slip sinker uh, sort of arrangement uh, with an egg sinker, a little barrel swivel and a bead um, because anytime the anytime that trout bites on your on your worm, pulls on your worm, he's pulling on your line. He's not lifting the, the sinker so much but you're feeling that in your rod tip. Uh, I told you I'd show you something fun with these worms before, and it's a good thing. Note, if you get a bait that says it floats, you still want to test it with the with the, the hooks and the sinkers you're using, uh, because this one makes a difference, uh, just a small difference between a number 8 or a number 10 salmon egg hook. Uh, and uh, this is a, a bottom up because it's a floating bait with that number 10, uh, with that number, number 10 egg hook that floats. Uh, floats right up from the bottom and put it right in front of where the where a trout is moving. At the same time, you use the same bait on a number eight egg hook, it's just a little bit larger hook, uh, and put it on your standard old, you know, little kid setup with a split shot and a, and a bobber and cast that out and drop it from the top. And with that number eight hook, that just a little bit larger hook, it just, it sinks at the tip, it's just kind of, kind of a, uh, a neutral buoyancy there. It's floating tip up, but that hook is keeping it down at the bottom. Same bait, different hooks, different presentation. Bottom up, top down. This floating bait is just handy as can be. Um, it's pretty clean. It's just like playing with Play-Doh. If you can play with Play-Doh, you can bait a hook with this stuff. Just take a piece and put it on your finger and uh, wrap it on the hook. Just so we make a little bell shape. This is the classic floating bait. I mean, this floats like a balloon. Um, you drop it to the bottom and that, and, and adjust your leader length, and you're gonna have that, that bait floating right where your trout are swimming. I always have these standard bobbers, and I, I don't know why. I really don't use them very often. I guess maybe they're there uh, in case a kid needs one, or I don't know, because I, they, since I was a little kid, I've had these in my tackle box, and I guess they have to be there. Uh, but I really prefer to use a slip, a slip cork or slip bobber if I can with any kind of bob stop up in the top. You know, this one's rated 8th ounce. Put an 8th ounce jig underneath it. Maybe tip it with a little bit of the, uh, a little trout nibble on there. And, I mean, it's just, it casts, you know, you can see how that slides down the bait and it casts really well. And uh, when it pops out, then it sinks up to where the bob stop is. It's a nice narrow profile that float is rated for that size of bait and when a trout hits it I mean just very fine you're gonna see it that floats gonna go under and and you can set the hook it's just a it's just a great setup lots of different ways to do things you know with eggs or whatever it's fun to come up with your own combination but man I gotta tell you a plain hook a plain hook with a night crawler or a couple pieces of corn is really all you need just go out there and have fun.